Hi, welcome back to ToddFun.com. I'm going to continue working on this power supply for the lathe. Uh, I've got a little bit of time tonight. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is uh, just test the voltages with the oscilloscope. Uh, now that I have my isolation transformer over here, uh, I can use my scope with this circuit, um, with this power circuit pretty much anyhow I want and I won't uh, be damaging my scope and I won't be uh, damaging myself so if you missed the uh, power trans uh, isolation transformer video fall back and look at that one and you'll see why it's so important now I can actually not just use a, a meter or a fluke I can actually use my oscilloscope on the circuit and see these waveforms a lot easier I don't have to do the two probe system um, I also have an overheating problem and so I rigged up a little 12 volt fan from a computer on a little handy um, holder and uh, that will keep the circuit cool while we work on it. Okay, now I'm going to uh, take some more uh, waveforms of this rather than just a, a, a voltmeter I'm going to use my oscilloscope. I'm mostly specifically interested in these 1 through uh, 4 on this pulse width modulation chip. Uh, we did the DC before, but now I'm, I'm going to poke around with the, uh, the oscilloscope. I'll start off with uh, showing uh, pin 3. So let me zoom in on the scope for you, and you just watch the scope while I probe pin 3. Pin 3 on the pulse width modulation. Pin 3 and the pulse width modulation. Okay, there we're getting kind of a, a sort of a, a charge in the, an immediately discharge, uh, sort of a sawtooth kind of pattern. Um, and uh, it's going to be, if I pull up the cursors real quick, it's at about uh, 0.5 volts at the top and at the bottom it's uh, about about 0.1 volts at the bottom and uh, then this is the ground right here that's what's at uh, pin 3 let's go on to pin 4 and oops, switch that up higher can't do this with one hand. So uh, uh, we'll go to the cursors. This is what's at pin 4. And we got a top of about 2.8 volts and a bottom of a sawtooth at about 1 volt, point, point 0.1 volt. Um, and then of course then ground again is, is down here. Okay. As far as that is concerned, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and sh uh, show the other measurements here real quick. Okay, got uh, got the measurements done here for you. This is the uh, this is the pulse width modulation chip, pins one through eight. It is a uh, UC3843N. Um, you can go to the very first post on this project to see, to get a, a data sheet if you want it. Um, uh, pin 8 is always showing a 5 volts, 5 volt reference, nice and clean. Pin 7 is showing 18 volts DC all the time, real clean. 6 is the output that we're supposed to have the pulses on, but it's nothing, there's no waveform. Uh, 5 is ground nicely. On this side, 1 through 4, um, we have 1 which is called comp, and it's got a 1.7 DC all the time. 2 is what's called uh, voltage uh, FB and it goes from 1.5 to 2.5 as we rotate the adjustment pot so that would be the speed control and so as you as we control that pot just as we saw before this DC changes there's no waveform there though um, and then three whoops I kind of erased it is the current sense pin 
and it's going like a sawtooth, which we saw uh, just a second ago, and it goes from 0.5 from 0.1 to 0.5 in a sawtooth at about 12 uh, kilohertz, 12.9 kilohertz. And then four is an RT constant um, going into that pin, and it also is a is a identical waveform sawtooth going from one volt up to 2.8 volt. And it's basically it's identical because it's actually uh, it exists across a transistor that actually uh, 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 that actually is pr producing that force. Uh, so it's going to have that same exact shape um, as pin 3, um, going into pin 3. So everything's fine there, um, not, still not 100% sure that that's going to make this chip work from what I've read so far. This is pretty close to what's supposed to be making it work. Um, uh, but uh, I'm not sure yet. I wonder then, now I'm going to go look at these exact waveforms and see what the data sheet is telling me for these exact waveforms and uh, see if we can figure out the next step. Well, I have went through the data sheet fairly well. I, I don't see a reason why this isn't working. Um, it seems like all the voltages are just right for this thing to be working. Um, I've even went um, and cleaned up my original drawing uh, with the, uh, operation, uh, the, the op amps and the pulse width modulation and kind of drew out the important um, components that are actually interacting. And uh, that compared with the data sheet, uh, I don't see why it's not working. So. It's very possible that I put in a, a, a bad pulse width modulation chip, or uh, maybe I wasn't being safe enough. On you know, I got I got an ESD mat underneath here, um, but I sometimes cover it with this uh, uh, protective cutting in sheet so I don't burn or damage it. So maybe I'll maybe I'll have to put a new chip in um, and make sure that I'm properly grounded. Make sure that I have my wrist strap on. Uh, when I put the chip in, a lot of times I'm not careful that way. Um, make sure everything's ESD proper, and maybe uh, maybe the new chip will work. But before I do that, I I want to actually see this motor work. I'm fairly confident that um, if the pulse width modulation chip was outputting about a 12 kilohertz, 50% uh, duty cycle minimum uh, signal, that the that the transistors would come on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, my uh, uh, function generator here to output that signal. So let me zoom in on what I have here. Okay, so I have my function generator here. Um, I have it set to, uh, as you can see in there tight enough, 12.9 um, kilohertz. And I've got a square wave as you can see on the scope up here. Uh, but when I'm going to inject this into my signal, I want it to be 0 to 6 volts. Um, and, and I do have my scope set to DC offset. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll trigger my uh, a function generator uh, to actually do an offset. And I already have it configured to do a 3 volt offset. So it jumps up to 0 volts. So you can see now that the bottom of my square wave is at 0 volts. I also have on my function generator duty cycle button right here. So I'll click the duty, duty cycle function and you see the, the waveform drop down to about maybe 20%, 15% duty cycle. And I can control that duty cycle with, with a knob all the way up to about 90% duty cycle. And what that'll do is that will actually control the, uh, how fast those transistors turn on and off. Now I don't want to go over 50% because I know that that would be too hard on that motor if, it, if I did. So I'm going to start off at a really low duty cycle at this proper frequency. I'm going to inject that uh, essentially, I'm going to in inject that signal uh, directly into that uh, output pin of the pulse width modulation and essentially do its job for it, uh, just to make sure that everything is actually working at that, at, that point, at that point. And then I'll probably go ahead and, and take a, uh, actually I'll probably test, I got another pulse width modulation chip, chip. I'm going to put on a breadboard, I'm going to test it in its general configuration, make sure it's working for me. Then I'm going to unsolder the one that's in there and, and test it and see that if it's working or not. Um, I don't think it is. And uh, hopefully then I'll put in another good chip and this will be done. Okay, I'm ready to go. I've got my signal ready to inject. Um, this, is the, this is the signal now. It's yellow because I'm actually injecting that at uh, pin 6 on the pulse width modulation. Uh, Everything is good to go. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my power trans, uh, my uh, isolation transformer now, and uh, see if the motor comes on. Well, that's interesting. It comes on, but doesn't stay on. Well, that was an interesting test. The uh, the uh, signal is obviously uh, injecting and turning those power transistors on because uh, the motor does turn up. But boy, it sounds bad. That motor sounds not good. It sounds kind of grindy inside. Um, but it uh, it is turning on. Uh, so that that proved positive that 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 signal is not getting to those power transistors to turn on the motor. But this uh, this signal should be plenty good to uh, to turn that motor on and keep it on. So I'm a little a little couldn't understand why it like it turns like maybe four times, maybe five times. You probably hear it, and then it stops. And then when I turn it off, it turns again. And I'm not seeing any amps. I've got my uh, amp meter hooked up in line with one of the legs. I'm not really seeing any amps flow. It's not like it's uh, uh, overheating or something um, that way. So uh, don't know yet. Keep shooting, I guess. Looks like I'm losing my signal. My signal is dropping too much. The load is dropping my power too much. Maybe I can up my power on my function generator. No. It's starting to drop a little negative there, and I don't want to drop negative like that. So that's interesting. Um, the uh, uh, I zoomed in and, and you, you saw the signal that I'm generating. I'm generating that signal with my, uh, with my uh, function generator, but it's not able to maintain the load. Um, this uh, function generator sh works best if it has a, a 50 ohm uh, terminator on the far end, and it does. I've hooked up right in front of a, a 47 ohm resistor that goes right before the power transistors, so that shouldn't be a problem, um, really. Uh, so. Uh, not quite exactly sure why the uh, function generator is uh, losing the ability to maintain its uh, voltage. Um, I don't dare just straight turn it up because what it's going to do is it's going to start dropping negative the uh, signal as I turn up. The, because I'm offsetting this to zero, um, as I start turning up the uh, amplitude, it's going to go below zero. So I'd have to kind of run both knobs at once. I'd have to turn up the amplitude and turn up the offset at the same time to try and keep them so that I'm not actually crossing zero because if you cross zero that's not good for your function generator to be pulling negative, uh, pulling down negative like that. Um, that's uh, not good. So very interesting. Um, not so much of this I'm going to cut out but uh, uh, some of it's interesting at least. I think I'm going to try, and uh, being I know I can go up to uh, 18 volts, I think I'm going to just see if I can get the offset real high and see if it uh, uh, loads. The thing is, it, it, it can't push out a lot. It can't sink very many amps uh, um, from the uh, function generator, but it should be able to do enough for these power transistors unless something's going backwards. I guess I could clip the pin going back into, um, in, into the... Uh, <sighs> 
into the pulse width modulation chip because it's probably still, because it's not functioning, it's going to have one transistor inside that chip that's still tied to ground. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that, I think if I literally took the chip out it would be fine because then I wouldn't have that internal problem with the uh, pulse width modulation chip that's not working for me. Okay, this looks a little jumpered, a little craziness, but what we've done is we've uh, essentially taken the, p the pin 6 of that pulse, pulse width modulation chip off at the two resistors that go and feed these two transistors. I've jumpered them together with the function generator along with the scope so we can watch it. And this time we shouldn't be drawing that uh, function generator to ground with that, uh, with that chip anymore and the motor should work. Okay, we're ready. Um, we have the uh, that same signal coming out of the function generator injected into uh, in those power transistors now. Um, so we're we're ready to give this a shot. Uh, should work fine this time. I'm not going to run it very long though because normally there's heat sinks and stuff on these uh, power transistors and bridge rectifiers, and all I have is my little fan, and so I don't want to run it for very long if it does work. So here we go. Here we got the fan blowing on it now. I think you can see the motor over here, maybe. And this is the motor here, which you won't really see the other side spinning, but you'll see this side. Whoa, look at her go. Wow, that works great. Yeah, that did it. That was uh, whoops. That was the that was the whole thing there. That uh, the pulse width modulation chip has an internal transistor that's still strapped to ground. It's not it's not not engaging. That's why it's not working. And it stays but because of the logic uh, inside the uh, pulse width modulation chip. Um, it keeps that transistor um, at ground, essentially pulling that pin to ground. And so my function generator couldn't really help. Um, the situation much. It got draw, drawn to ground too, but we saw it turn on for a quick second for that first test. Well now it comes on, stays on. In fact, let's turn it on again. Let's do a little duty cycle. Um, we'll take up about 50% and see how that works. I'll watch the amps on the amp meter here too. I hope we can hear it. Turn it up. And that's just the duty cycle on the uh, function generator. Okay. That's about all we want to do because we're we're drawing some we're drawing some current, generating some heat. But without a load on the uh, motor, it's it's pretty small. I mean, we're not like we're we're actually driving a treadmill with somebody running it, nor are we driving a uh, a lathe with somebody cutting. So it really I could run it like this uh, without overheating too easily too much. But that's it now. Got to get that fun. I got to get that transistor working, um, the pulse width pulse width modulation chip working, and uh, and this should be this should be good to go. And I think I just have to replace it again.